Hey y'all, Farmer Jesse here. So, I'm a no-till farmer who doesn't really love hay. I'm a bit of a hater. And I swear that'll be the only time I try to that joke. Today. Yeah, the thing is, there are things I love about hay. There are things I really want to have hay in my garden for. And there are a lot of reasons I don't want it anywhere near my garden. So, there's a sort of conundrum around hay. Today I'm going to talk about it, and I'm going to talk about why I have a bunch of hay here in my garden. So let's do it. All right, so first, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I think that's the most important thing about hay, is that you're subscribed to the channel. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so some things about hay that you need to know is hay is not straw. Hay and straw are two different things. A little blurry there. Hmm. Straw is the stock of grain, generally. So it's wheat or rye, then they harvest the rye or they harvest the wheat and then they keep that stock and that is straw. Hay is dried grass, so they'll cut the grass, uh, let it dry, they'll rake that a couple times to get it nice and dry without rotting, and then they'll bale that and put it up. Yeah, it's like a storage forage. That is actually what it is. Now, the benefits of straw are that it doesn't often come with that much weed seed. It does occasionally come with weed seed, but generally speaking, if the farmer does a good job harvesting, it won't come with as much weed seed. Hay, on the other hand, unless you're managing your own hay, it will often, I would almost say more likely than not, bring in some amount of weed seed. There are other issues, and this can be an issue with straw as well. Oftentimes, hay is sprayed with broadleaf herbicide to kill any of the broadleaf plantain or anything else that's coming up, any of the sort of broadleaf weeds, so it can get a pure stand of grass. That's what a lot of hay farmers will do. Also, because you're stealing that hay off that fertility, off of that property, they'll off, some hay farmers, not all of them, not the one that I use, some hay farmers will use uh, chemical fertilizers, which makes the grass a little less nutritious uh, and also just may put some chemicals into your garden. So there are concerns, general concerns with using hay. My biggest one is the weed seed. We're gonna go get out of the rain real quick. There, that'll work. We'll just stand by our hay. People might say, you know, the inclination is that, okay, it doesn't matter if it brings in weed seed. You know, you want to make sure it doesn't have any of those chemicals on it. Uh, but generally speaking, like, why does it matter if it brings in weed seed if you're just going to keep it covered and keep the soil covered? The seeds will fall down to the soil or the rot or whatever. But I've done this for a long time, and I can honestly say some seeds may rot and some seeds will disappear, but some will germinate right on the hay. Because essentially what happens is that you get this layer of rot of hay right against the soil surface. Those weed seeds will germinate in that slightly warm, kind of mucky hay, and they'll grow up and they'll grow roots and they'll get into the soil and then you'll have weeds. So, and yes, you can keep covering it with hay, uh, but ultimately, there is a level at which you don't want more hay because then you, you have to have something to be able to plant into, right? Like you can't just plant into dry hay. You gotta have nice, moist soil to plant your crops into. A lot of different permaculture design where you're putting down a ton of hay and then just in the spring, you're pulling that up aside and setting a plant in. That by no means guarantees you a weed-free garden. And so we kind of worked away from hay. One, it's really hard to find enough hay to cover an acre. But all those other issues come with it. So we've kind of gone away from using hay. However, that spot I was just standing in, that now it's raining on, uh, that spot in our garden, I call it the worst plot, affectionately, that spot in our garden really needs some TLC. So I've been throwing a lot of plant matter over there. And as you can see in this little uh, uh, time lapse that I uh, went ahead and covered it really thickly, at least on that half that's really bad, uh, with hay. So what I'm gonna do is, I think, rekindle my relationship to hay because of one tool. I don't think, as I reflect on it, I don't know that any tool has quite changed the no-till game quite like silage tarps. So what I'm gonna do with that plot is I'm going to have the sheep graze it. They're gonna graze all those little turnips and stuff you could see probably behind me whenever I was standing over there. And I'm gonna have them graze it and, you know, do their it's poop, their, their poop thing. 
all over that hay, and then I'm gonna throw those silage tarps over till the spring. In the spring, I'm gonna pull those silage tarps over, back, off, and either plant into it if it looks good enough or do my, do my beds of compost. I haven't decided on that part yet, but either one. I'm gonna let that hay sort of break down, let the soil eat it, because that's the thing about hay. I mean, it's like perfect soil food. This is what soil was made to eat. Grass, rotting grass, it's like the ideal soil food. So I'm trying to kind of boost the fertility on that end, boost the soil level a little bit, and just give it a little bit more nutrition so that I can grow stuff a little better on that half of that plot. And so I see a lot of potential now thinking about it with, sil with the silage tarps in conjunction with these giant plastic tarps, which, uh, yes, it's plastic, it sucks, but, it does do a lot of good for farmers. And part of that good is being able to lay out a whole plot in hay. Visitor. Yeah. So I could put a whole plot under hay. I could throw those tarps over top and then whenever I'm ready or whenever it's, the tarps have been on there for long enough, I can pull that hay aside and put a plant into it. I really like that potentially for summer lettuce, having a nice cool surface to put the lettuce into, you know, add a little bit of overhead irrigation to cool them off. I like that for fall brass brassicas, like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and keeping the, putting those in in July and August when it's blazing hot here. Having that nice light, you know, color on top of the surface uh, will help keep it a little bit cooler and not so hot because right now I'm planting lettuce in July into black compost. I gotta fix that. So I'm working on different ideas for that. And uh, anyway, I don't know. What are you guys' thoughts on hay? Do you use it? Do you like it? Uh, I, I know that if you have control over your hay and you cut it yourself, we don't. We don't have the space or the equipment. But if you cut your hay yourself, uh, you have the time, and you can control the weed seed, that can be a really cool option. You do have to think about how you're gonna re-fertilize that land. Like I said, it is stealing to an extent. You're taking all that fertility off and moving it elsewhere instead of putting it right back down through ruminants or just through mowing. And we are trying to develop a system that maybe we could use the sheep in conjunction with the pasture and maybe mow, have them graze half of it and then mow it for hay and then have them graze that half the next round so they're refertilizing it, if that makes any sense. Till then, until we have that kind of equipment, we're not doing that. We're just getting our hay from somebody we trust and we're putting that on the garden uh, where we can, under silage tarps to prevent the weed seed issue. That's about it. If you guys like this video, please like this video. Also make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to check out the Patreon page. Big things going on with the no-till stuff. Go look at the Patreon page, it's cool. All the cool kids, all the cool kids. Did I forget anything? Share the videos, uh, share everybody's videos, like everybody's videos. Likes are free. Just. They're free. They're like, you can give them away. Just give away a like. Bing. Other than that, y'all, uh, I don't think any of my animals are outside. Oh, I've got the sheep. I'll show you the sheep. Let's go visit the sheep. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.